Many variations of aircraft engine starting have been used since the Wright brothers made their first powered flight in 1903. The methods used have been designed for weight saving, simplicity of operation and reliability. Early piston engines were started by hand, with geared hand starting, electrical and cartridge operated systems for larger engines being developed between the wars. Gas turbine aircraft engines such as turbojets, turboshafts and turbofans often use air, pneumatic starting, with the use of bleed air from built-in auxiliary power units or external air compressors now seen as a common starting method. Often only one engine needs be started using the APU or remote compressor. After the first engine is started using APU bleed air, cross bleed air from the running engine can be used to start the remaining engines. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Piston engines. Topic. Hand starting, propeller swinging Hand starting of aircraft piston engines by swinging the propeller is the oldest and simplest method, the absence of any onboard starting system giving an appreciable weight saving. Positioning of the propeller relative to the crankshaft is arranged such that the engine pistons pass through top dead center during the swinging stroke. As the ignition system is normally arranged to produce sparks before top dead center there is a risk of the engine kicking back during hand starting, to avoid this problem one of the two magnetos used in a typical aero engine ignition system is fitted with an impulse coupling, this spring loaded device delays the spark until top dead center and also increases the rotational speed of the magneto to produce a stronger spark. When the engine fires, the impulse coupling no longer operates and the second magneto is switched on. As aero engines grew bigger in capacity during the interwar period, single-person propeller swinging became physically difficult. Ground crew personnel would join hands and pull together as a team or use a canvas sock fitted over one propeller blade, the sock having a length of rope attached to the propeller tip end. Note that this is different from the manual turning over of radial piston engine, which is done to release oil that has become trapped in the lower cylinders prior to starting, to avoid engine damage. The two appear similar, but while hand starting involves a sharp, strong yank on the prop to start the engine, turning over is simply done by turning the prop through a certain set amount. Accidents have occurred during lone pilot hand starting, high throttle settings, brakes not applied or wheel chocks not being used, all resulting in aircraft moving off without the pilot at the controls, turning the engine, with the ignition and switches accidentally left, on, can also cause injury, as the engine can start unexpectedly when a spark plug fires. If the switch is not in start position, the spark will occur before the piston hits top dead center, which can force the propeller to violently kick back. <laughs> Hux starter The Hux starter invented by Bentfield Hux during World War I is a mechanical replacement for the ground crew. Based on a vehicle chassis the device uses a clutch-driven shaft to turn the propeller, disengaging as the engine starts. A Hux starter is used regularly at the Shuttleworth collection for starting period aircraft. <laughs> Pull cord Self-sustaining motor gliders often known as turbos are fitted with small two-stroke engines with no starting system, for ground testing a cord is wrapped around the propeller boss and pulled rapidly in conjunction with operating decompressor valves. These engines are started in flight by operating the decompressor and increasing airspeed to windmill the propeller. 
Early variants of the Slingsby Falca motor glider use a cockpit mounted pull start system. Topic: <laughs> Electric starter. Aircraft began to be equipped with electrical systems around 1930, powered by a battery and small wind-driven generator. The systems were initially not powerful enough to drive starter motors. Introduction of engine-driven generators solved the problem. Introduction of electric starter motors for aero engines increased convenience at the expense of extra weight and complexity. They were a necessity for flying boats with high-mounted, inaccessible engines. Powered by an onboard battery, ground electrical supply or both, the starter is operated by a key or switch in the cockpit. The key system usually facilitates switching of the magnetos. In cold ambient conditions the friction caused by viscous engine oil causes a high load on the starting system. Another problem is the reluctance of the fuel to vaporize and combust at low temperatures. Oil dilution systems were developed mixing fuel with the engine oil, and engine preheaters were used including lighting fires under the engine. The key gas priming pump system was used to assist starting of British engines. Aircraft fitted with variable pitch propellers or constant speed propellers are started in fine pitch to reduce air loads and current in the starter motor circuit. Many light aircraft are fitted with a starter engaged warning light in the cockpit, a mandatory airworthiness requirement to guard against the risk of the starter motor failing to disengage from the engine. Kaufman starter The Kaufman starter was an explosive cartridge-operated device, the burning gases either operating directly in the cylinders to rotate the engine or operating through a geared drive. First introduced on the Junkers Jumo 205 diesel engine in 1936 the Kaufman starter was not widely used by civil operators due to the expense of the cartridges. Topic. Pneumatic starter In 1920 Roy Fedden designed a piston engine gas starting system, this was in use on the Bristol Jupiter engine by 1922. A system used in early Rolls-Royce Kestrel engines ducted high-pressure air from a ground unit through a camshaft-driven distributor to the cylinders via non-return valves, the system had disadvantages which were overcome by conversion to electric starting. In-flight starting When a piston engine needs to be started in flight the electric starter motor can be used. This is normal procedure for motor gliders that have been soaring with the engine turned off. During aerobatics with earlier aircraft types it was not uncommon for the engine to cut during maneuvers due to carburetor design. With no electric starter installed, engines can be restarted by diving the aircraft to increase airspeed and the rotation speed of the windmilling propeller. Topic: <inertia>, Inertia starter. An aero engine inertia starter uses a pre-rotated flywheel to transfer kinetic energy to the crankshaft, normally through reduction gears and a clutch to prevent over-torque conditions. Three variations have been used, hand-driven, electrically driven and a combination of both. When the flywheel is fully energized either a manual cable is pulled or a solenoid is used to engage the starter. Topic. Gas turbine engines Starting of a gas turbine engine requires rotation of the compressor to a speed that provides sufficient pressurized air to the combustion chambers. 
The starting system has to overcome inertia of the compressor and friction loads, the system remains in operation after combustion starts and is disengaged once the engine has reached self-idling speed. Electric starter Two types of electrical starter motor can be used, direct cranking to disengage as internal combustion engines and starter generator system permanently engaged. <laughs> Hydraulic starter Small gas turbine engines, particularly turboshaft engines used in helicopters and cruise missile turbojets can be started by a geared hydraulic motor using oil pressure from a ground supply. <inaudible> <inaudible> Air start With air start systems gas turbine engine compressor spools are rotated by the action of a large volume of compressed air acting directly on the compressor blades or driving the engine through a small, geared turbine motor. These motors can weigh up to 75% less than an equivalent electrical system. The compressed air can be supplied from an onboard auxiliary power unit, APU, a portable gas generator used by ground crew or by cross feeding bleed air from a running engine. In the case of multi engined aircraft, the Turbomeca Pelost gas generator was used to start the SPAY engines of the Blackburn Buccaneer. The de Havilland Sea Vixen was equipped with its own Pelost in a removable underwing container to facilitate starting when away from base. Other military aircraft types using ground-supplied compressed air for starting include the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter and variants of the F-4 Phantom using the General Electric J-79 turbojet engine. Topic. Combustion starters Topic. AVPIN starter Versions of the Rolls-Royce Avon turbojet engine used a geared turbine starter motor that burned isopropyl nitrate as the fuel. In military service this monofuel had the NATO designation of S746 AVPIN. For starting a measured amount of fuel was introduced to the starter combustion chamber then ignited electrically, the hot gases spinning the turbine at high revolutions with the exhaust exiting overboard. Topic. Cartridge starter. Similar in operating principle to the piston engine Kaufman starter, an explosive cartridge drives a small turbine engine which is connected by gears to the compressor shaft. <laughs> Fuel – Air Turbine Starter Apu. Developed for short-haul airliners and military aircraft requiring self-contained starting systems these units are known by various names including Auxiliary Power Unit Jet Fuel Starter or Gas Turbine Compressor Comprising a small gas turbine which is electrically started, these devices provide compressed bleed air for engine starting and often also provide electrical and hydraulic power for ground operations without the need to run the main engines. Topic: <laughs> Internal combustion engine starter. An interesting feature of all three German jet engine designs that saw production of any kind before May 1945, the German BMW 003, Junkers Jumo 004 and Heinkel He's 011 axial flow turbojet engine designs was the starter system, which consisted of a Riedel 10 horsepower flat twin two-stroke air-cooled engine hidden in the intake, and essentially functioned as a pioneer 
pioneering example of an auxiliary power unit Apu for starting a jet engine. For the Jumo 004, a hole in the extreme nose of the intake diverter contained a D-shaped manual pull handle which started the piston engine, which in turn rotated the compressor. Two small petrol, oil mix tanks were fitted in the annular intake. In-flight restart Gas turbine engines can be shut down in flight, intentionally by the crew to save fuel or during a flight test or unintentionally due to fuel starvation or flameout after a compressor stall. Sufficient airspeed is used to windmill the compressor then fuel and ignition are switched on, an onboard auxiliary power unit may be used at high altitudes where the air density is lower, during zoom climb operations of the Lockheed NF-104A the jet engine was shut down on climbing through 85,000 feet meters and was started using the windmill method on descent through denser air. Topic. Pulse jet starting Pulse jet engines are uncommon aircraft power plants. However, the Argus as 014 used to power the V-1 flying bomb and Feisler Phi 103R Reichenberg was a notable exception. In this pulse jet three air nozzles in the front section were connected to an external high-pressure air source, butane from an external supply was used for starting, ignition was accomplished by a spark plug located behind the shutter system, electricity to the plug being supplied from a portable starting unit, once the engine started and the temperature rose to the minimum operating level, the external air hose and connectors were removed, and the resonant design of the tailpipe pipe kept the pulse jet firing. Each cycle or pulse of the engine began with the shutters open, fuel was injected behind them and ignited, and the resulting expansion of gases forced the shutters closed. As the pressure in the engine dropped following combustion, the shutters reopened and the cycle was repeated, roughly 40 to 45 times per second. The electrical ignition system was used only to start the engine, heating of the tailpipe skin maintained combustion, 